Samsung just took the wraps off its Galaxy S22, and it brings exactly what you'd expect from a product refresh. However, the announcement comes with a bit of a loss, and that is the departure of the Galaxy Note line. How did we get here, and what does Samsung have planned for us on the horizon now that it's gone? Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to Denki Channel from this brand new set. My name is Ken and the Galaxy Note has always had a special place in my heart. And I'm certainly not alone. For a good part of its run, I saw it as a cooler, more refined counterpart to the Galaxy S, but especially built for the power user. It housed the biggest, most beautiful screens, larger than life batteries that lasted well over a day, and of course, the reason why it's even called the Note in the first place, the S Pen. You can jot notes with it like you would on a notepad, or use it like a stylus and channel your inner 90s businessman doing businessy things, even though you're really just scrolling through Twitter all day. I love these phones a fair bit. I daily drove some of them over the years, including the Note 8, and my personal favorite, the Note 10. The bezels! Well, you were just basically holding the screen. It was all screen. The palm rejection was kind of But especially with those later notes, they felt like a million bucks in the hand. It was a pretty immersive experience as well. For as niche as the Galaxy Note was, there was a market for it. While long-term sales figures for the Note are progressively tough to find each generation that passed, it easily sold millions of units in sales. And I don't think it's crazy to assume that it sold into the hundreds of millions. Or is it? Is it crazy for you to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to get alerted when I upload new videos? Companies like Samsung weigh development, manufacturing, and marketing costs against perceived demand for any product they sell. After all, it's about profits and pleasing shareholders. But what if you're succeeding in the market and want to jump ahead of the curve and make your own product segment. That certainly carries risk. You might be sinking cost into dead ends, wasting resources, or God forbid, you damage your hard earned reputation. A little bit of foreshadowing in there. <laughs> this is a risk Samsung took over 10 years ago with the release of the original Galaxy Note. To paint a picture of what the landscape was like back in those days. Smartphones at this point were maturing into the user-friendly, robust, do-everything devices we know them for today. At the time, Apple made big performance strides with the iPhone 4S, which improved on the very pretty, but scandalous, iPhone 4 design. On the Android side, HTC was still making absolutely banger flagships, but couldn't hold a candle in numbers to the marketing and manufacturing powerhouse that is Samsung and its Galaxy S line. Even in 2011, the flagship brand was well on its way to becoming a household name. This is around the time where people would stop saying, I had a droid, droid. and would go, I got a Galaxy, I have a Samsung. It's such a little thing, but it means a lot. That's brand recognition. So if you're Samsung and your business is succeeding, how do you proceed? Well, like any good business does, you ride the momentum and innovate. And so Samsung bestowed upon us the Galaxy Note. Phone? Tablet? Feel free, it's Galaxy Note. Is it a phone? Is it a tablet? Yes, yes it is. It debuted at IFA 2011 in Berlin and made its way to market shortly after that. It sported the same general hardware found in that year's Galaxy S2, but tailored more for the enthusiast market. Samsung generally clocked the CPU a tad bit higher compared to that S2, made the removable battery a lot bigger, and most importantly, it had a gigantic 5.3 inch display in 2011. Mind you, it might not sound huge now, but back then, bezels were there. And best of all, it featured the original S Pen, which was a hit with enthusiasts who still had fresh memories of the good old days featuring Windows Mobile and Palm PDAs. I can tell you at the time, I thought the Note was a somewhat cool idea, but I thought that it would be nothing more than a fad and just a marketing stunt to generate buzz. But people actually ended up admiring the Note despite its jarring size. In the end, the Gen 1 Galaxy Note sold 10 million units, which is great considering how alien the device was on the market. For context, the original iPad, which which pioneered the modern tablet experience as we know it today, had an extra year on the Note, but they both sold the same amount of units by the end of their runs. 10 
million units for the Note. A device, again, that created its own product segment with no precedent to go off of. It's commendable. Following that, Samsung continued to refine the formula more and more, and the market responded well, accounting for 50 million units of sales for the first three generations of Galaxy Notes. But after this, things get a little interesting. Let's just say the Note had its fair share of speed bumps in the following years that challenged its market presence. Approaching the mid-2010s, the smartphone meta shifted rapidly as the market continued to grow and mature. By now, Samsung wasn't the only one with a big phone anymore, and it found that the Note was competing with actual mainstream flagships with big screens, like the LG G4. Sure, the Galaxy Note might be admired by enthusiasts, myself included, but for Samsung specifically, the company pulling the strings, again, there are risks involved in making a phone perceived to have no compromises and being the best of the best, especially when other companies are offering similar packages, but for less money and aimed at a wider audience. So. What did Samsung do? They broadened the scope of the Note to play toward a more mainstream audience. I look back at the Galaxy Note 5 as the start of the downhill spiral. Note 5 brought tons of quality of life improvements like a premium, higher quality build, performance gains, and thinner display bezels compared to its predecessor that made the phone easier to use given its very large footprint. However, this is where Samsung started asserting some dominance over their customer base omitting features that left hardcore Galaxy Note fans and enthusiasts scratching their heads, including making the still big battery non-user replaceable and leaving out the micro SD memory expansion slot and thus streamlining the Galaxy Note into the main Galaxy family of phones because understandably, there are more customers to be had in the mainstream. While, quote, there's a lot more to like about this phone upgrade than this like, according to Tech Radar, news was spreading like wildfire that the Note 5's S Pen, if inserted backwards, can critically damage the phone and render the S Pen completely useless. This ultimately forced Samsung to make statements and disclaimers moving forward for people not to be dumb. Don't stick the pen in backwards. <laughs> Mind you, phone scandals were a bit more prevalent back then. Just the year before, Apple had their big iPhone 4 antenna gate debacle. There's actually probably a whole video on that that I can do. If you want to watch that, let me know in the comments below. But with all the buzz that antenna gate had, scrutiny on product engineering was particularly high for tech products, even for little things like this. But nothing would leave its mark on history more than the Galaxy Note 7. 2016 feels like eons ago at this point, so it's easy to forget just how crazy the Galaxy Note 7 situation was. Samsung released the Note 7 in August 2016, and almost immediately, reports started coming out that various initial run units were combusting or just straight up exploding. While it seemed like it was happening to just an isolated amount of units at first, it snowballed into a whole fiasco so big, even Samsung couldn't have foreseen the ramifications. This was made obvious a month into the Note 7's release, when Samsung responded to the US's formal device recall, which advised people to send in their phones for replacement units with alternative batteries from a different vendor. Well, lightning can't strike twice, right? Those units with the second batteries also caught on fire due to rushed manufacturing oversights trying to make up for lost time. By mid-October, Samsung had to do something about the Note 7. This phone was literally making global headlines every other day, with as many as 117 seeing a fiery fate. With no real way of telling whether or not you had a ticking time bomb in your pocket, public places like airports and the airplanes that fly in and out of them straight up banned the phone out of safety concerns. Galaxy Note 7 phones are not to be charged or powered on during this flight. As a result, eventually, Samsung issued a full voluntary global recall for the Note 7 and ultimately discontinued it the day after. However, this whole fiasco took a while for Samsung to recover from, largely because it never really ended at that point when they pulled back the phones. They had to do a lot of damage control. There was a contingent of people that still had their Note 7s well after the recall that had no intention of sending their phone back. Samsung 
issued precautionary updates to stop the phone from charging past a certain point. And to really put nails into the coffin, Samsung, with the help of its global carrier partners, ended up heavily throttling cellular data and would eventually go as far as blacklisting and breaking phones via software update to prevent people from using their Note 7s for good. Even a year later, you'd still see signs at airports and at public venues. You'll hear announcements on planes and buses to not bring the Note 7 on board. It inadvertently became advertising for Samsung in the worst way, even if bad publicity is still publicity. It's said that Samsung lost around $17 billion through this whole fiasco, which isn't huge in the scheme of how much Samsung is worth, but certainly Certainly not insignificant. And through it all, they managed to take it all in stride and released four more generations of the Galaxy Note and even a Note 7 Fan Edition. We actually had one. I think it's still in the office. The battery hasn't expanded like 40 of our other Samsung phones did. But I think that even if the Note 7 didn't crash and burn, emphasis on burn, I think the writing on the wall has always been there for the Galaxy Note. Even excluding the catastrophe, the Note 7 was already pegged as being even more mainstream focused than the Note 5 that came before it. And year after year, the Galaxy Note just started looking more and more like a bigger Galaxy S, just with a stylus and a larger screen. The most egregious though, was the last entry that we saw, the Galaxy Note 20, which came months after Samsung released their biggest Samsung Galaxy S phone ever, the S20 Ultra. This boy was chonky, to say the least, and I daily drove it for a bit, and I'll tell you, I needed bigger pockets. Can't fit two big things in there. And for all intents and purposes, it was basically a Galaxy Note by another name. Disappointingly, by comparison, the Note 20, so there was the regular one, and there was an Ultra one, but both had lazy cost-cutting compromises in them. The standard Galaxy Note 20 was smaller and cheaper than usual, but had a disappointing plastic construction and offered minimal benefits to the more affordable entry-level Galaxy S20. And on the flip side, the Note 20 Ultra, while built with the usual metal and glass construction, compromised physical battery capacity to house its S Pen. And with Samsung dropping the ball, it seemed like the market didn't care either. With waning demand, the company was forced to drastically reduce manufacturing right before the holiday season, which more or less was a telltale sign of the Note's demise. To really confirm the Note integrating into the Galaxy S line, Samsung put the capability of its last standout feature, the S Pen, in other products, including the S21 Ultra. The S22 Ultra just straight up has an S Pen built right into it. So we are left with the Galaxy Note being gone in name, but its spirit certainly lives on in Samsung's current and future efforts. Samsung Mobile is a huge entity that uses its power and resources to push the envelope. And honestly, I think that's pretty cool. Especially with this generation of Z Fold and Z Flip, they feel like special niche products that are also now ready for prime time. They resist damage better than ever and are cheaper than ever. And I've even been seeing them out in the wild. Clearly, this is working for Samsung. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. But do you guys agree? Let me know in the comments below. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And again, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel. And I'll catch you guys later.